Uh, the purpose of the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight is to showcase the Royal Air Force. It looks at many aspects. Uh, what we do is we commemorate uh, our past uh, and really the Battle of Britain uh, was the Royal Air Force's greatest battle honour uh, and therefore we have the aeroplanes from that era to commemorate that. It also shows that the pilots of today still retain uh, core values, that same ethos and the same skill sets uh, and we demonstrate that uh, through the displays uh, and it also looks to the future, it looks to inspire those of a younger generation as to look at uh, what the nation has done in its past, those brave men and women that made these aeroplanes legends, uh, take that inspiration and move forward uh, with the Royal Air Force into a future generation. We have a, a new generation of uh, engineers here at the flight uh, also. Uh, we have 30 engineers uh, to keep these aircraft running. We have a fleet of 12 aircraft uh, and it needs the highest calibre uh, of engineering excellence to make sure that these old ladies can stay in the air uh, and commemorate uh, the Royal Air Force and, and what it's done. Uh, but to do that we have uh, guys that are new to the Royal Air Force, they've only been in for uh, two or three years. They've started their training uh, on the typhoon or the tornado and they have uh, learned about those and then they'll come here, if they've done very well they'll come to the flight uh, and they use that, uh, that knowledge that they've got uh, and they put that to, to good use and they look at heritage engineering. Uh, it's a very different type of engineering but all of the same standards apply. Everything has to be uh, done to the highest of standards to make sure that these aircraft are as fit to fly as the typhoons and tornadoes that you can hear above us. Modern RAF training doesn't cater for piston engines, uh, propeller-driven aircraft uh, so much now. We have to uh, fill in all the older skills that we, we still need to work on these aircraft. Uh, for instance, piston, propellers, uh, airframe repairs, it's all different. So uh, we have an in-house training scheme, so the guys can, uh, when they first arrive, they do a Module A and learn about uh, the smaller aircraft we've got, the chipmunk. Um, and then as they go through the training uh, scheme, they build themselves up, getting more in-depth theoretical knowledge and practical knowledge of all the aircraft that we operate. We've got quite a support network out there of, uh, of uh, civilian companies that help us out. But fundamentally, we, um, like, like every other um, aircraft that the, um, the Royal Air Force operates, uh, we have to go to a document set. Generally, we're pretty good from spares. We, uh, we can pretty well get everything. Um, if we've got a number um, and it's in supply, that, that's pretty straightforward. Certainly uh, general spares that are, are used on other aircraft, we, we can cover all that off quite nicely. Um, and if we've got a drawing, we can even go out to a company and get it made. I, I think the, the biggest difference and the biggest challenge is go, going from your fault finding and investigations a lot of it's written down of your step-by-step -step process on modern aircraft. Whereas we've got to think for, for ourselves on our feet and be very adaptable in what we do and how we find our information, ranging from handwritten notes. We've got one written from 1942. It's all handwritten in pen and it's got illustrations as well that were done by the, the person themselves. So it can be hard to decipher through what they were meaning at the time, just through different, the different ways that people speak from back then to nowadays as well. Uh, Ex-Sergeant Pilot Royal Air Force a long time ago and now a Battle of Britain Memorial Flight tour guide and I've been for the last 28 years. Probably the best job in the world. We get asked today, well I get asked anyway as an ex-pilot like uh, is it easy to fly? It depends how you look at it because it's 1940s aeroplane. It's not easy to fly by today's standards because there's no power control as such. Pilot flies it. It's heavy. Um, it's got a mind of its own. You might think you're going one way, and then says, "No, you're not. You're going another way." It, it does it, and you got used to it. It's a big aeroplane, but uh, somebody was very kind enough to give me one of those when I was 20 years and three months old. Declared that there was no road tax. You don't have to buy any petrol, uh, there's no insurance to find, you've got six people here standing by waiting to help you. So that was quite an experience at 20 years, three months old. Bear in mind that 
During the war, quite a lot of aircrew were even younger than that. It's a very special year, uh, again, for a number of reasons. The, the, uh, the big anniversary, if you like, this year, or there's a number of them, but the, uh, we've got two during our dis uh, flying display season and one just afterwards. We've got the 70th anniversary of D-Day, which will be an enormous uh, event. Uh, we will be taking four aircraft to Normandy, uh, all of them in uh, D-Day colours. We'll have a Mark 19 Spitfire, a Mark 9 Spitfire, the Dakota, which of course was intrinsic to those D-Day landings, uh, dropping out uh, paratroopers over the, uh, the, the Normandy coastline. Uh, and also we'll be taking the Lancaster, uh, which is painted as a 617 aircraft, which took, uh, took part in a taxable, which was the spoofing raid uh, on D-Day to try and spoof the Germans that the raid was going to go somewhere else. So we'll have a very heavy BVMF presence down at Normandy this year. Uh, as we look forward uh, to later in the year, uh, we also have uh, the anniversary of Arnhem. So again, the Dakota will be, uh, will be the star of the show. It's the 70th anniversary of that. So we'll be looking to uh, represent the Royal Air Force and the flight uh, over in Arnhem. We're looking to dispatch parachutists for that. And then looking a little further on, we also have the 70th anniversary of the amazing Tirpitz raid, uh, which unfortunately we won't be flying for, but we still hope to, uh, to be very much involved in that anniversary towards the end of the year. And the other big thing that we've got going on this year is uh, something that hasn't happened for a very, very long time is we have the Canadian Lancaster, the only other airworthy Lancaster in the world, which is going to come and visit us in August. This is going to be a phenomenal event. Uh, it is going to be uh, a once-in-a-lifetime chance for many to see these two uh, historic, uh, legendary aircraft flying together. So uh, in August and early September, uh, you will hear the sound of at least eight Merlins, and I expect they'll be escorted by fighters. So you can expect 10, 12, maybe 14 Merlins, all in one place, um, eight of which will be uh, belonging to the Lancasters. For your tomorrow, they gave that today. We are doing what we do today to keep their memory alive tomorrow, and I think that's the biggest thing, so that it's never forgotten, the sacrifice that not just the Air Force have, have given in wars, but everybody.